I wanted to share a few videos with you. They are two minutes each. And this is for you, for our youth. Today is the world of science. Today everyone talks about science. Today everyone admires science. Today when we talk like this, the people, everybody's shy to say, I have a religion. Oh, I'm not religious, I'm just spiritual. I don't know what that means. I worship myself. I'm spiritual, fine. People are shy, they don't wanna say I'm religious, fine. People say, oh, come on, man, you're still talking about this stuff today, the science is, that we're building spaceships and this and that, why are you talking like that? Like you're talking like you can't see things and there are things and there are angels and we can't see angels, where do they exist? Around us, everywhere, but we can't, oh, come on, man, don't be talking like that. And when, then you say demons and, oh, dear, why you talk like that? Like we're now in the age of science. Like you're saying there are angels we don't see and there are devils that we don't see and then there is heaven and hell and, and time twisting and, and, you know, like, come on. Can we show the last video? Can we turn off the lights? Because in this, we're talking about a parallel universe, basically what we're saying. That around us, there is a universe that we don't see. And it's around us. It's literally around us. We're living in the middle of it, but it's a parallel universe. Okay? So now, turn off all the lights, if we can, um, so that we have the most uh, focus and enjoyment. And we need uh, the mic to be there. So I'll get you the mic. Um, and let's see how science talks about parallel universe, which means things that happen around us, but we don't see it. Things that living and happening around us, but we don't see it, but it actually, it's parallel to our universe, and it could interact with us, but maybe we cannot interact with it. Uh, all lights are off, or we have no control of that? Okay, so everybody listen and pay attention. We're gonna show you a few videos, inshallah. First. Imagine you could find an explanation for everything in the universe. From the smallest events possible to the biggest. This is the dream which has captivated the most brilliant scientists since Einstein. Now they think they may have found it. The theory is breathtaking, and it has an extraordinary conclusion, that the universe we live in is not the only one. For almost a hundred years, science has been haunted by a dark secret. That there might be mysterious, hidden worlds beyond our human senses. Mystics had long claimed there were such places. They were, they said, full of ghosts and spirits. The last thing science wanted was to be associated with such superstition. But ever since the 1920s, physicists have been trying to make sense of an... So basically, this, the voice is not clear. Basically, what if there are parallel universes? They say the mystics have been saying that there is a parallel universe and it's full of ghosts and spirits. Science has been trying its best to disassociate itself from such notions. They don't want to say it. They're running away from it. But then they found themselves running back right into it through the science that they are following, right? So it's uh, just I wanted to explain the words, if you can put it back again. It says mystics have been saying this all along. They don't want to say religious people, so they're saying mystics. They're saying it's full of spirits and ghosts and science did not want to associate itself with something superstitious like that. They call it superstitious. Now they're running back right into it. So continue. Go back a little bit.
worlds beyond our human senses. Mystics had long claimed there were such places. They were, they said, full of ghosts and spirits. The last thing science wanted was to be associated with such superstition. But ever since the 1920s, physicists have been trying to make sense of an uncomfortable discovery. When they tried to pinpoint the exact location of atomic particles like electrons, they found it was utterly impossible. They had no single location. When one studies the properties of atoms, one found that the reality is uh, far stranger uh, than anybody would have invented in the form of fiction. Particles really do have uh, the possibility of, in some sense, being in more than one place at one time. The only explanation which anyone could come up with is that the particles don't just exist in our universe. They flit into existence in other universes too. And there are an infinite number of these parallel universes. All of them slightly different. In effect, there's a parallel universe in which Napoleon won the Battle of Waterloo. In another, the British Empire held on to its American colony. In one, you were never born. Essentially, anything that can happen does happen in one of the alternatives, uh, which means that superimposed on top of the universe that we know of is an alternative universe where Al Gore is president and Elvis Presley is still alive. This idea was so uncomfortable that for decades scientists dismissed it. But in time, parallel universes would make a spectacular comeback. This time, they'd be different. They'd be even stranger than Elvis being alive. There's an old proverb that says, be careful what you wish for in case your wish comes true. The most fervent wish of physics has long been that it could find a single elegant theory which would sum up everything in our universe. It was this dream which would lead unwittingly to the rediscovery of parallel universes. It's a dream which has driven the work of almost every physicist. Some took the form of three-dimensional membranes, like our own universe. Others were merely sheets of energy. Then there were cylindrical and even looped membranes. Within no time at all, the 11th dimension seemed to be jam-packed full of membranes. We began to ask ourselves the question, who lives in the 11th dimension? We have intersecting membranes. We have membranes with holes in them. We have membranes that look like donuts or have many different kinds of donut holes. We're just littered with different kinds of membranes. This 11th dimension not only had the membrane, which was the bubble-like or sheet-like object, but it had a whole wealth of different brains of varying dimensions, unfortunately called P-brains. 
Each of these membranes was a possible other universe. M theory had unwittingly made the idea of parallel universes respectable again. In another universe, the proton may be unstable, in which case atoms would dissolve and DNA cannot form, and therefore there's no intelligent life in these universes. Lying just beneath everyday reality is a breathtaking world where much of what we perceive about the universe is wrong. Physicist and best-selling author Brian Greene takes you on a journey that bends the rules of human experience. Why don't we ever see events unfold in reverse order? According to the laws of physics, this can happen. It's a world that comes to light as we probe the most extreme realms of the cosmos, from black holes to the Big Bang to the very heart of matter itself. I'm gonna have what he's having. Here, empty space teems with ferocious activity. The three-dimensional world may be just an illusion, and there's no distinction between past, present, and future. But how could this be? How could we be so wrong about something so familiar? Does it bother us? Absolutely. There's no principle built into the laws of nature that say that theoretical physicists have to be happy. It's a game-changing perspective that opens up a new world of possibilities. Coming up, what if new universes were born all the time? In this picture, the Big Bang is not a unique event. And ours was one of numerous parallel realities. Somewhere, there's a duplicate of you and me and, and everyone, everyone else. else. Are we in a universe or a multiverse? The fabric of the cosmos. So basically, everyone that was interviewed here is a scientist at Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Brown, UC Berkeley, Stanford, and from England, Oxford, Cambridge. This is right now what is mind-boggling physicist, that there is actually the possibility of parallel universes. And in these other universes, there are living things. So now, what she said in the other videos, that mystics have been saying this and scientists have been running away from this. Until now, they're running back into it because the laws of the universe are not making sense. For example, we say, if Allah wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he could make fire not burn. The laws of fire, that fire burns. Um, if Allah wants, fire could actually not burn. Like in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, um, Allah said to the fire, stop burning. I could show you a whole, um, a whole video right now that they're discovering that in science there's come something called the law of uncertainty. The law of uncertainty means that any law of physics that is out there, there is an exception to it and the exception happens. Like it's not something that never happens, it actually happens that the rules could be bent, that water could become fire, that fire could become cold. Everything, every law in the universe could be broken and something opposite could come out of it. So that's why this, the, the, the scientists are being humble and they're saying, we can't for sure tell you that this is the way it is all the time. We can say you this is the way it is most of the time, but many times things could change and the opposite could happen. This thing, the law of um, uh, physics, when we talk about um, the, uh, the, the, the parallel universes, in an essence what Islam is saying, that we are surrounded by another dimensions. That we human beings, Allah enabled us to see height, width, and depth. Einstein comes and says, the fourth dimension is time. For height, width, and depth to exist, you have to have the fourth dimension, which is right now is time. And then he talked about that the universe is made of a fabric, and the fabric is called time-space fabric. It's called a time-space fabric. 
So then th this is when it came. Right now, more and more things they're discovering, like they can, f they, the, the two particles could be at the same place, which is impossible. You could have an electron and a proton occupying the same space at the same time. This is, in, according to science, is impossible. Or you could have an electron at two places. It's here and it's here at the same time. So now they're not able to explain these things. So they're going mathematically and based on very complicated mathematical equations, they're saying we have to accept that there are other dimensions that we don't see. And in these dimensions, there are living things that we will never be able to see because our senses cannot make us see them. So now they upgraded from four dimensions to five dimensions, to six dimensions, to seven dimensions, to eight dimensions, to nine, to 10, and now they're finally stopping at number 11. That in this world, there are 11 dimensions, including time being one of them. So what is there other than height, width, and depth? They say, oh, there is an angle in space that we don't see. It's just too small for us to see. And there might be living things living there. 